today we're going to be looking at something called stoichiometry, or stoic for short. What stoichiometry is, is basically the calculation of quantities of chemicals that react and form during a chemical reaction. What we're going to be doing with stoichiometry is basically putting together your knowledge of chemical reactions, where you are learning how to predict products for a chemical reaction, and moles. We're going to blend those two things together to get stoichiometry. So for reactions, well, there's a little bit of balancing involved. So if I told you to balance this guy, I'll help you out here. It would be four, five, four, six to get this guy to balance. So those numbers where we have four NH3 and five O2, what those numbers mean, it's the relative number of moles that react and form during the reaction. So let's just say you started with two moles of NH3, not the four like it says in the equation here. And it wanted you to figure out how many moles of oxygen you would need to complete the reaction so you wouldn't have any leftovers. Well, stoichiometry is often an analogy that's often used is that it's just like a recipe. It's kind of like uh, if you were baking a cake and they told you you would need two cups of flour and a half, one cup of butter and two eggs. That's kind of like what these numbers are here. It's telling you the amounts of things that you need to make that cake um, or cookies or whatever it is that you may be making. And then usually when you're looking at a recipe, it'll tell you the yield, like this makes two dozen cookies or something. Well, that's the numbers in front of your product. So you can double or triple or half a recipe. Well, you could do the same thing with a chemical reaction too. So this says, what if you only use two moles worth of NH3? So we're going to cut this amount in half. And if we want to know how many moles worth of oxygen you would need to complete the reaction, we'd have to cut this number in half too. So you'd need 2.5 moles worth of oxygen. Just like when you cut a recipe in half, you don't just cut one ingredient in half or else it won't taste right. So if we cut one of these guys in half, we have to cut everybody in half. So the math you probably did just now to figure that out in your head was just proportions. And you said, oh, I took the number four and cut it in half, so I have to cut this guy in half too. But unfortunately, not all of the problems we're going to be doing this year are quite so simple that you could do them in your head. So we're going to be going back to that factor label, dimensional analysis, goalpost thing um, one more time. So we're going to look at that problem and say, how would I set that guy up if it wasn't quite so easy? How would that problem look in a factor label kind of setup? So this tells you that you have two moles worth of and H3, that's going to be your given. And we were trying to figure out how many moles worth of oxygen you would need to react with that. The conversion that's going to show up in all stoichiometry problems is your balanced equation. You're going to use the numbers in your balanced equation as a link to get you from one chemical to another. So what do I mean by that? Well, always, always, you start with your given over the number one. Two moles of NH3 over the number one. Well, I want moles of NH3 to cancel out and go away, and I'm trying to get to moles of oxygen, and I need a link to get me from one chemical to another. That link is going to be your balanced equation you know that for every four moles worth of NH3, you need five moles worth of oxygen gas to make that reaction go. So we're going to use that four to five ratio down here. 
I'm going to say for every 4 moles worth of NH3, I have 5 moles worth of O2. Your moles of NH3 would cancel out and go away, and we'd be at moles of oxygen where we were trying to go. So we know we're done. So we would multiply across on the top. 2 times 5 is 10. 1 times 4 on the bottom is 4. Well, that's 2 and a half. Clearly overkill compared to the one we just did in our head. But just so you can see how you're going to set it up. And use that balanced equation, those numbers in the balanced equation, as your ratio to get you from one chemical to the other.